Heat President Pat Riley's committed a combined $195 million on Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, and P.J. Tucker, surrounding Jimmy and Bam with an elite core. They were a tad pricey, but Lowry's all-star quarterbacking, Tucker's league-best perimeter defense, and Robinson's elite three-point shooting make them worth the money. Those are three of five new Heat players who can impact their chances this season. Here's every reason for why the Miami Heat have a solid shot at winning the East again and their path back to the NBA Finals in 2022. If you haven't already and enjoy my content, help me get to 50k by subscribing. Also, hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. The franchise player Jimmy Butler is in the prime of his career at age 31. Kudos to Miami's front office for realizing they have no time to waste and making win-now acquisitions. You can't afford to come up empty in free agency when you have a high-maintenance star like Jimmy Butler on your team, and Pat Riley knows that. Butler can be a bit overdramatic at times, but the man has the right to do whatever he wants with his resume. He's a four-time All-NBA player and five-time All-Defensive Team player. He was the best player on both ends of the floor for a Heat team that went all the way to the NBA Finals in the bubble. Fortunately for Jimmy, he had the help of one of the most versatile and valuable big men in basketball, Bam Adebayo. Whether it was the swift defensive rotations in the pick and roll, or his passing and slashing ability on the other end, Bam Bam was a force throughout Miami's entire East Championship run. Adebayo's established himself as an undeniable top three center, and one of the better second options in the NBA. Everything went perfectly in the bubble. There was hope that this was only the beginning. Unfortunately, Miami was swept in the first round in 2021. Following the shortest offseason in American major sports history, Miami looked broken after facing another 72-game grind. The Heat's top players' production reflected their visible fatigue as Jimmy Butler shot 31% from the field and 18% from three-point range. For that, we have to credit the Bucks for exacting revenge for what Miami did to them in the bubble. But those numbers from Jimmy aren't anything close to the two-way production we saw in the bubble and throughout his 11-year career. Something was off. During 2021's regular season, Jimmy's play held up. He led the league in steals for the first time in his career. He averaged his highest scoring total since 2017-18 and even posted a career high in field goal percentage. But the grind of going through one championship run, having less than two months to get your mind right before the next training camp, and then having to do it all again, eventually messed with the Heat collectively. It was clear the Heat were worn down. Having said that, along with Jimmy Butler, a few other players are going to have to bounce back from the playoff disappointment. Jack Harlow's running mate Tyler Harrow, along with the $90 million man Duncan Robinson, will have to be a lot more efficient. I'll get to Robinson when we get into the Heat's newest acquisitions, but for Harrow, he's still benefiting off the clout he gained from the Harlow music video and, of course, his brilliant play in the car. bubble. After breaking out into a household name in the bubble, Harrow failed to build off that production in his second playoff run. While he did struggle with his efficiency against Milwaukee, let's cut Boy Wonder some slack. He did increase his scoring per game in his sophomore season, and he's only entering his third pro year. He's got a ton of time to get his game right. I expect Tyler to bounce back this upcoming season. One player who's played under five games in a Heat uniform could add a new element of firepower to Miami's offensive attack. It's been a rough go in the last few seasons for Victor Oladipo since his all-star tenure in Indiana. He's only played four games with Miami, all coming last year after being traded over from the Houston Rockets. The Heat gave up Avery Bradley, Kelly Olynyk, and a pick swap in that trade. Oladipo wasn't able to stay on the floor due to injury troubles, and in mid-May, he had season-ending surgery to repair his right quadricep tendon. Vic re-signed on a one-year deal this offseason. It's hard to believe that nearly three years ago, this man became a two-time All-Star and made his first All-NBA team. I'm hoping that Vic can resurrect his career in a Derrick Rose-esque fashion because he deserves to have more success. 
We've seen the competitor that Oladipo can be when he's at his peak. If he can even be half that player for Miami, that's all they need. You don't need too much shot creation when you just acquired an NBA champion and six-time All-Star at point guard. North Philly's finest has taken his talents to South Beach after being a part of a sign-in trade deal with Toronto for Goran Dragic and Precious Achua. They had to give up a lot to Toronto. I've mentioned in several videos that I think Achua can develop into an elite center, but the Heat aren't willing to wait for that to happen. The Raptors got a very solid return. Having said that, the Heat are acquiring a franchise-changing point guard who's proved over the last few years that age is only a number. You'd think Lowry's body wouldn't hold up after getting decked one time after the other, but as he's gotten older, he just draws more and more charges. Back in 2016-17, Kyle ranked number 12 among players in charges drawn. However, from 2017-18 up until last season, he's number one by far in that area. The guy is a proven winner, considering the Raptors hadn't made the playoffs since 2008 before his arrival, and then he led the Raptors to seven straight playoff appearances after being signed by Brian Colangelo in the summer of 2012. He was the heart and soul of Toronto throughout the championship run, the ultimate fan favorite, but always one of, if not the most valuable player on the floor consistently. It's really short-sighted to look at the $90 million contract and think he got overpaid, because Miami's quickly set up for major success in the short term. Lowry's presence brings a much more well-rounded floor general. Dragic was key to the Heat's title run in 2020 and a player that many Heat fans came to love. However, he was always picked on defensively throughout his tenure. Conversely, Lowry's a near all-NBA talent on that end, so given the Heat ranked number 9 among 16 teams in 2021 playoff defensive rating, Kyle's defense should really help. Not forcing Bam to switch can keep him closer to the rim for rebounds, and Butler can now get a break from guarding some of the better perimeter guards. On the other end, given Kyle's one of the best lob passers in the game, he's a more adequate pick and roll partner for Adebayo, and he should relieve Butler of his playmaking burden. Including last year, Lowry had six seasons in his career of averaging at least 17 and 7, so he's showing no signs of falling off. Duncan Robinson's posted back-to-back -back seasons of 40-plus percent three-point shooting on eight attempts per game, but like everyone, his production fell off against the eventual champions in the Milwaukee Bucks. Duncan's 28% three-point shooting in the four-game sweep won't get it done in 2022. At his best, Robinson's developed into one of the better marksmen in the league. Over 73 games back in 2019-20, the sharpshooter ranked number four among players in three-point percentage. Last year, he ranked more like 40th, so hopefully we see the best version of the sniper come October. One of the Morris brothers is leaving LA as Mark Heath is headed from the City of Angels to Dade County. Mark Heath's the ideal modern-day stretch big. He can catch and shoot from the corner and the wing at a high rate and space the defense out for his team's top players. Laker fans would know that best, as during their 2020 championship run, Morris shot 42% from three-point range on three attempts per night over 21 playoff outings. P.J. Tucker may have been the best pickup of anyone the Heat got, given the cheap price he came at. Miami got the best wing defender in the league for only two years and 15 million. Heat diehards, as well as Jimmy Butler, know firsthand that Tucker's peskiness, lateral quickness, and strength can shut down the opposing team's top player. So, the Heat are committing a ton of money to Kyle and Duncan, giving them a rather expensive starting five. But with their best player at 31 years of age, they had to go all in. The bottom line is, Lowry, Robinson, and Tucker fit perfectly next to Miami's duo. Butler was in desperate need of another perimeter player to create offense, he gets that in Kyle Lowry. Giannis went off against them in the playoffs, now they have P.J. Tucker to deal with his old teammate. And they couldn't lose Duncan Robinson's efficient 15 points per game, they had to pay him. Taking that into consideration, some excellent win-now moves for Miami, and it sets them up for their second finals appearance in three years. Let me know in the comments section if Miami can compete with Brooklyn and Milwaukee. Hope you have a great one. Deflo signing off.